There are two videos for Lab 1 on the blood. The first video, Module 1, will cover blood components and hematocrit. This is a micrograph of a blood smear. I have encircled some red blood cells. You can see in the center how they are light colored, and this is due to the thinness where the nucleus used to exist illustrating the fact that they are a biconcave disc. These small particles are fragments of larger cells called megakaryocytes, and they are called platelets or thrombocytes. These cells are illustrations or photographs of leukocytes. Leukocytes will have a nucleus and the shape of the nucleus can be used to identify the different types of leukocytes. Before we move on to a hematocrit, I wanted to show you what a centrifuge looks like. This is a piece of equipment that is used to separate the blood into the three columns that I showed you before. Capillary tubes filled with blood are placed into the centrifuge and the centrifuge spins the blood at a high RPN to separate the blood into the three columns. The hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells to the total blood volume. Since it is the percentage of red blood cells in your blood, it also will give you information about the oxygen carrying capacity of your blood. 98.5% of all oxygen is transported bound to the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell. Only 1.5% is transported dissolved in the plasma. The normal range for females is 42% plus or minus 5%. What this means is that it can be as low as 37% or as high as 47% in females. The normal range for males is 47% plus or minus 5. Several factors will influence the hematocrit, such as anemia, altitude, and the reason for a higher hematocrit in males is the presence of testosterone. The equation for calculating the hematocrit is down at the right corner of this slide. It is the height of the red blood cell column divided by the height of the total blood column times 100. This is the height of the red blood cell column. In this case, I have given it a height of 15 millimeters. This is the height of the total blood column, and I have given it a height of 32 millimeters. I will then take 15 millimeters and divide it by 32 millimeters times 100, and this will give me a hematocrit of 47%. Be sure that you can calculate the hematocrit and tell me if it is within the normal range for a male or a female. Now let's look at leukocytes or white blood cells. There are many different types of leukocytes, and they will be used to protect you against pathogens, abnormal cells, such as cancer, or foreign cells. A normal range or level for leukocytes in your blood is between 4,800 to 10,800 cells per millimeter cube of blood. Elevated levels above 11,000 cells per millimeter cubed is called leukocytosis and decrease levels below 4,000 cells per millimeter cubed is called leukopenia. Leukocytes can be placed into two main categories based on the appearance of their cytoplasm when they are stained. Granular sites have granules that are visible when they are stained. Agranular sites do not have visible granules in their cytoplasm when they are stained. You will need to be able to identify a histology image of them, as well as tell me what their functions are and whether they are a granular site or an agranular site. The saying at the bottom of the slide, 
never let monkeys eat bananas, can be used to help you remember which type of leukocyte is the most abundant and which one is the rarest. The N stands for neutrophils, L for lymphocytes, M for monocytes, E for eosinophils, and B for basophils, which are the rarest. Let's begin with the granular sites. Neutrophils are the most abundant of the leukocytes in your blood. They make up between 60 to 70% of all the leukocytes in the blood. They are used to fight against bacteria and fungi. They have a nucleus that contains three to six lobes. I'll use the illustration at the bottom to demonstrate the lobes for the cell at the tip of the green pointer. This is the first lobe, second lobe, third lobe, and a fourth lobe. Neutrophils also exhibit positive chemotaxis. What this means is that they move toward certain chemicals, chemicals that are released by injured tissues. They are phagocytic cells. They will eat the bacteria and the fungi. They can also carry out a process called respiratory burst. In this case, they produce superoxide, which can be converted into hydrogen peroxide and then into a substance like bleach. The hydrogen peroxide and the chemicals similar to bleach can be used to kill bacteria and fungi. In the process, however, they will end up killing themselves. Their granules store antimicrobial agents. These are chemicals that can be used to kill microbes. Pus is a collection of dead leukocytes for the most part. A second type of granular site are the eosinophils that make up between two to 4% of the leukocytes. Their numbers are elevated during parasitic worm infections, allergies, and asthma. Their nucleus contains two lobes and the granules stain red. The granules contain digestive enzymes that they release onto the parasitic worms. This is the type of extracellular killing. The digestive enzymes then will break down the parasite. The third type of granular site is a basophil. Recall that these are the rarest, making up only half of a percent to one percent of the leukocytes. They have dark staining granules, which really obscure the nucleus. These granules release histamine, which initiates inflammation. Also, they release heparin, and heparin is an anticoagulant, preventing blood clotting. Their nucleus is S or U-shaped. Now let's look at the A granular sites. Recall that they don't have visible granules when they are stained. Their cytoplasm looks a pale blue. There are two types of A granular sites lymphocytes, which make up 20 to 25 percent of the leukocytes, are involved in your specific immune response. It's important that you make a distinction here that the immune response is specific. There are two types of lymphocytes. T lymphocytes that are involved in eliminating virus-infected cells and cancer cells or tumors, as well as foreign cells such as in a transplanted organ. B lymphocytes, when they are activated, begin to divide and most of them give rise to plasma cells, which release antibodies. Notice their nucleus is either shaped like a circle or like an oval. So the nucleus is spherical with a small blue halo of cytoplasm around it. Always look for that blue halo. The second A granular site is a monocyte. Monocytes make up about 3 to 8% of the leukocytes. They are the largest of the leukocytes. When they leave the blood, they become macrophages. Macrophages are phagocytic cells, and their numbers are elevated when you have a chronic infection, a viral infection, or intracellular bacterial parasites. These are bacteria that live within the cell. 
Examples of these types of infections would be mononucleosis as well as TB. Their nucleus is shaped like a kidney or U-shaped. This slide shows you the five different types of leukocytes that you will have to be able to identify in histology slides. You will also need to be able to identify erythrocytes and platelets.